Hallelujah. Good morning, Word of Life. Good morning. Good morning. This is the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all your blessings, Lord. Thank you for giving us another day, breathing the breath of life into us again, Lord. So, Lord, I pray for this service. Thank you for technology. Thank you, Lord, that even through these times we can come together in fellowship, Lord, and to glorify your holy name. So, Lord, we magnify your name this morning. We glorify you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Sister Maria is going to is going to read a scripture this morning and then brother Todd will lead us into a devotion. So Maria, you can read the scripture from uh, the gospel of John. So when Jesus came, he found that he had been in the tomb for days already. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about 15 states away. Many of the girls had joined the women around Mark and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Then, when Martha had the Jesus was coming, she went and met him and met him. But Mary stayed in the house. Therefore, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Even even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your, your brother will rise again. Mary said, Ma Mark said to him, I know that he will rise again to the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who be ye and me be ye me with ye 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 yeah even if he guys were whoever ye and be ye in me we never guy do you believe this said to him yes you are I have come to believe that that you are the Christ God's son he who comes in good work amen. I picked those scriptures this morning because uh, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life, and whoever believes in me will not die, but has eternal life. And uh, at the end of John's gospel, and he said at the end of uh, chapter 20, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But they are, these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. And also, uh, at the end of John's gospel, John identifies himself as the person that it was an eyewitness. Uh, this is the disciple who was bearing witness about these things and who has written these things, and we know that his testimony is true. Now, there are also many other things that Jesus did were every one of them to be written, I suppose that the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. So Jesus did many signs showing that uh, not only was he the son of God, but he, that he was God, that he was Emmanuel, God with us. And uh, many of the miracles that Jesus did proved uh, that he was his divinity, that proved his deity and, and by raising Lazarus from the dead, he proved that he had authority over uh, life and death. And he calmed the wind and the waves, showing that he had authority over the physical world, over nature. He had uh, authority over the supernatural, the spiritual world. He was able to cast out demons and all these things. Uh, so John was saying, I wrote these things that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ and the Son of God, and that by be believing, you may have life in his name. And I'm just going to read a couple of more scriptures from about the resurrection from 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel 
that I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, which is Peter, and to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. So what Paul is saying here that uh, when, when Paul wrote this, there was many people that were still alive that had seen the resurrected Christ. We know that Thomas even touched his hands where the nails went through his hands and uh, bowed before him and said, my Lord and my God. They ate with him. He, he had a physical body. He, he, he ate food. He ate fish. So uh, it, he had a physical uh, resurrection. And that's what Paul's talking about here. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but maybe later today you can read uh, you can read First Corinthians 15, where Paul goes into a lot of detail about the resurrection. But near the end of First Corinthians 15, he says, "For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed." For this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? So <clears throat> I just want to remind myself and to remind each of us this morning that uh, even though we might die, even though Lazarus died, Lazarus is uh, like every person because of the curse. We are, we are all going to die, whether it's coronavirus or a uh, heart attack or a car wreck or uh, whatever it may be. Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will not die, that you will have eternal life. And then later on in, in John chapter 11, verse 39, Jesus said, take away the stone. And this is just before uh, Jesus told Lazarus to come out of the tomb. He'd been dead four days. And they said, well, Jesus, there's, it's gonna be, there's gonna be a horrible odor in there because he's been dead for four days. But Jesus still said, take away the stone. And as followers of Christ, that's, that's our job. We get to take away the stone of unbelief. We get to take away the stone of uh, people who don't know Christ. And we can point them to the one who has power over life and death and let people know that just, just as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, uh, we, we were all once dead in our trespasses and sins. So by preaching the gospel, which we just read about in 1 Corinthians 15, where Paul said that Jesus died in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, but that he rose again. And Paul goes into a lot of detail saying that these, these things are true because there's many witnesses. John, who wrote his gospel, said, I was there. I saw these things. So that's, that's my word for this morning. I just want to encourage us all to know that because of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, that we have eternal life by putting our faith in him. And it's, it's because of God's grace. It's because of God's love and his mercy uh, that we can all stand and know that when this life is over, that we just, we just change locations. We just go, from, we go into eternal life. So I hope that encourages someone today, no matter what we're going through, that Uh, by our faith in Jesus, we have eternal life. Le scrittura li rat l'u Maria toda zela bix juri l'autorita li Gesù kello fu il mewt, fu il xajja l'autorita li andu fu il temp u għalu kol li aħna kolla kemmaħna ħammuktu 
السعيش الكورونا فيروس هو بشي اكسيدنت او بارت اتك كلا كما هنا هموتو اما جسو كل يدنا لمين يمن فيا عندو الحيا عالدين و وكل نهججكم بيش ما طول الجرنات اللوم نقرأو كل لول كورنتين كابيتلو خمستاش كفي باولو يتكلم كل فوق نيس لي كينو عادم حيا داو كليراو الجسو عام من المويت داونو ما جرايت لي فيرا سهو ونهججكم بيش تقرأو دان الاسكرتورا وكيف كيف كيف قالنا هونا تود لي كل من يدفع كل من يمن في جسو عنده الحياة دائم ووحنا بحالة كريستيانة بحالة الشيب لتا جسو الريدون كونو داو كينيس للرس قدك البلاتا من قدم الأبار تا داو كينيس لما يمنوش ونرس قوهم ونشاندرولهم لحبار التايبا انفخرو المولي ونرنجراتسياو حاللويا Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord, that you give life. You are the almighty God. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I would encourage any one of you who would like to pray, share a message of encouragement or a testimony that you have. This is, this is the time to share with us all. In the meantime, I, I ask also Brother Evans from our sister church in Gozo um, to, to turn on his mic and, and pray for, for the youths. Let us pray. We exalt you, our, our God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. You are great and most worthy of your praise. No one can measure your greatness. Each generation will tell your children of your mighty acts and will proclaim your power. Lord, you are good to everyone and you shower compassion on all of your creation. We praise you for your mighty works. Thank you for the youth of Gozo, Malta, and the entire world. And thank you for protecting the youth and blessing them in all areas of their lives. Father, it is your word that the youth obey your commands and seek you first in all they do. We pray that the youth will not let loyalty and kindness leave them but they will tie them around their necks and ride them deep within their hearts. As they do this, they find favor with both God and people, and they will earn a good reputation. Our Lord and Savior, we pray that the youth will grow into the full knowledge of Jesus Christ and confess with their mouths that he is their Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, we ask that you fill our youth with your wisdom and spiritual understanding. Please help our youth to choose godly friends and bless their relationships with their parents and loved ones. Turn the hearts of parents and youth towards each other. Give our parents wisdom and patience as they diligently teach their youth your word. Holy Spirit, Teach our parents your principles for nurturing their sons and daughters. Remind the youth to follow godly instruction. Our Lord and Master Jesus, touch the hearts of our youth and remind them not to defile themselves with the earthly pleasures and help them to make the right choices and activate their fruit of the Spirit in their lives. Jesus, we pray that you will give parents in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Dear Lord, dear Lord, we thank you, O Lord, for this day, the day you have chosen. 
for you to be worshipped. There are four absolutes in this world, O oh Lord, which are evil, justice, love, and forgiveness. These four absolutes intersected once, once in this world, O oh Lord. And that was at your crucifixion. Evil was shown through your body, O oh Lord, which was completely blemished, completely ruined by our iniquities. Justice came by you, O Lord, serving the justice of the Godhead. Love was shown, O Lord, that you have kept us all in our heart, in your heart, so that when you will rise again, you will have been victorious against the evil. And all who believe in you will have the blessed hope. And forgiveness is what the Father has done through you, O Lord, so that we will be appearing white in front of his throne of mercy. How can we not worship you, O Lord, today together, but in each and every step of walk in our life? We have the obligation, O Lord, to have you in our hearts when we remember that until the last drop of blood from your body was poured for our redemption, for our atonement. Thank you, O oh God, for giving us a way, a truth, and a life through your Son, Jesus Christ. Because even in these troubled times, we can still live in the peace of the Spirit of Christ. How would we have been living, O oh God, in these particular times if we did not have you? I myself would be in complete anxiety, in complete yeah. weakness, and would probably even would need psychiatric help. But I thank you, O oh Lord, worship you, kneel down in front of you as I declare my dependence upon you instead of dependence on medicine. And I say, O oh Lord, my life is in you, you are in me. And I walk with you in peace. Because I know, O oh Lord, that whatever happens, you are in control. And I pray for all the brethren. As you know, I pray each and every day for them. I pray for the brethren so that they find the peace. Although again, their trouble, troubles are even greater than ours. Um, give them all the peace that they need to go through, to go through their ordeal. But... Give them the courage, O oh Lord, the spirit of victory and the hope in you that we and them will be victorious over all. Thank you, Lord, for this hope and for this strength that comes from you in the name of the mighty Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for you are our refuge. You are our strength. We bless your mighty name, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now, this is the time of the service where we are going to partake in the Lord's Supper. So I'm going to ask Masha to read Psalm 32. Psalms 32, 
Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not iniquity, and in those spirits where there is no guile. When I keep silence, my bones waxed all through my roaring all day long. For day and night, thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into drought of summer, Salah. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I'll confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and though for for forgavest the iniquity of my sin, Salah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time, when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place, thou shalt preserve me from trouble, thou shalt compass me about songs in the observance of Allah. I will instinct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be you not as the horse or as the mule, which has no understanding, whose mouth is just held in a bit and bridle, and lest they come near unto thee. Many sorrows shall be the wicked, but he has trusted the Lord. Mercy shall compass him about. Be glad in the Lord, rejoice ye righteous, and shout for joy, all ye that's upright in the heart. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So every human being has a has a fundamental problem. And no, it's not COVID-19, it's not quarantine, depression lack of finances, or any other sickness. But it is the unkept law of God. Call bnidem and the problema fundamentali. O mish il COVID-19, mish il quarantina, mish depression, jew no asta finanzi, jew qualinque mardohra. Imma il problema li kol bnidem andu, ija li ahna man zommux il liġi talla. If we don't see how bad the bad news is, we cannot see how good the good news is. Yekkahna mux xanarfu kem mi kera lahbar il xazina, mahnix xanaraw kem mi taiba lahbar il taiba. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death. That's bad news, right? But in contrast, the good news is, continuing Romans 6.23, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Melawek frumani sitta, verse 23, edin naraw kontrast, edin naraw feynet teidin nalli ilħlas ta' dnub u għal mewt. Imma jekk inkomplu naqraw dan il-vers, naqraw ukoll li iddon li jallajtina ija il-ħajja għal-dejjem f-ġesu Kristu. In Psalm 32, we came across terms like transgression, forgiveness, sin, and iniquity. And these terms echo Exodus chapter 34, verses 6, to seven, and I'm gonna I'm gonna read these verses. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, "The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity." and transgression and sin. But who will by no means clear the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation? We cannot and we don't force God to show mercy. 
Mercy is one of his attributes, but so is holiness and justice. Ahna man istaw xin jadu li l-lalla jurina l-ħnijena, għax l-ħnijena jja wahda mil-karakteristici tijaw, bħalmi jja u kol il-qdusija u bħalma jja u kol il-ġustizja. So parents and non-parents alike, we should be aware that sin, spiritual neglect, and failure to avoid the world's ungodliness can have a tragic result, not just personally, but also on our families. Mela ahna genituri, wanka dawk li mumis genituri, irridun kunu ewer narfu li idnub in negligenza spirituali u jekkahna man warbush il piacigri ta' dinja, dan jistaj kun rizultat traġiku mux fuqna personali bis izdanka fuq il-familji ta'na. Our sin can be the cause of destruction of our loved ones. Id-dnub ta'na jistaj kun dak li wassal dik il-dakit kissir fuq dawk il-nis li nħobbu. So as the psalmist said, we must not keep silent or try to hide from God, but instead acknowledge and confess our sins to God, which will lead to repentance and a changed heart. Mela kif għal s-salmist u għan portanti li uddima l-la manzum mux xalqna maluq jaw niprovaw ninħbew min alla izda morru uddimi tron tijaw u nitolbuħ maħfra, narfu id-dnub ta'na, nitolbuħ maħfra u dan li xaj wassal għall-indijema u għalb mibdula. In all of this, God promises to instruct us and teach us the way we should go. F'da kollu għalla jam l-inna weda, li ju waħaj meċxina u jigwidana fitri li jiridnaw. Can you see how blessed, how highly favored are the forgiven? Tistataraw, ke mahna mbirkin, ke mahna anna favur, dawk li juma li andom il-maħfra talla. And all of this, all of this is because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. U da kollu permess ta xol mitmum ta Jesu Christu. So, brothers and sisters, as we hold these elements in our hands, as we hold the bread, as we hold this cup, let us be thankful. Let us really see how bad the bad news is. So we can learn to appreciate, we can learn to be grateful for the good news of Jesus Christ. We can truly look at the cross with awe, all that suffering that the Lord went through for my sins, for your sins. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your body. We thank you for your blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for bearing our sins. Thank you for taking our, our place. Lord Jesus, we thank you because once we were hopeless, now we have hope. Once we were lost, but now we, we are found. Once we didn't have any purpose, but now you give us a purpose. Once we were guilty, but now we are forgiven. We are your righteousness. Lord Jesus, before we were orphans, but now we are your children. So brothers and sisters, let's eat and drink in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's all eat and drink together in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We magnify your holy name. We bless you. Lord, we, but we don't just want to do these things just by word, but by action. Lord, let our lives be a living sacrifice. Let our lives be an offering unto you, O God. We bless you and we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Pastor Joe, I would invite you to lead us in today's, in today's message. But first, I, I, want to, I want to pray for you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for our pastors, our leaders. Thank you, Lord, for giving them God the wisdom, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that even in these hard times, Lord, times that surely no one have gone through before, I thank you, Lord, for the strength that you're giving them. I thank you for the peace that you're giving them, Lord. I pray that you keep your hands over them, Lord. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy, Lord. Protect them, Lord. Yes, Lord, I uh, pray for Pastor Joe. Prepare our hearts as he is going to deliver the message that you prepared in his heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, uh, I trust you had a good week. Um, I know that some of us um, had things to uh, be anxious about. Um, uh, but as we've been hearing all morning, um, we really need to learn how to trust um, in God. In the last uh, three weeks, um, we, we, we discussed issues which I believe we really all need to hear um, uh, intensely. Um, um, the first week that we did not meet as a church um, physically, um, I spoke about the Holy Spirit in times of trouble. Um, uh, the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Santo in times of trouble. Um presenti fizmin um emuya. And we have seen several scriptures then about how the Holy Spirit can work in our heart and through us um so that we will find rest and peace and joy even in the difficult Times. Then we spoke about faith against fear. As believers, we need to look at the situation from a different point of view. Fear exists. And everybody has fear in one way or the other. One, depending on the person, one might exaggerate fear. Um, uh, il karatru tal persona, um, tista persona tkabbar lafariet. And some may not really give notice or give in attention to fear. O persuni ohra matanciatu attenzioni metatigi denil bizarro. They will be, a, you know, by nature more courageous to face fear um, when they see it. However, as Christians, 
courage for those who are on both extremes must be based on faith on who God is. Um, uh, Paula Cristiani, I urge you to know the character of the base to be in the in the field of Christ. We said last time on, on that day um, that we must believe that God exists. And I explained what it means to say I believe in God exists. He exists because he is who he is. When we look at the phrase in Greek, it's the same phrase, it's the same verb that Jesus, Jesus used when he said, I am. Um, uh, in the scripture, in Sibub, the same um, uh, tradition, the Kelma Grega, in Jesus, the Al Yin U. And that, because of that, they wanted to stone him because he made himself equal with God. Umin Habba, Dan el Klim, the Al, Ridu Ehajruh, Alish Ifisser Char. And that's who he is, God. Last week we spoke about Jesus being the anchor of our soul. Through the storms of life that each one of us is going through, especially at this time, we need a definite strong anchor. Um, and we need a strong anchor that keeps us connected with the Father. And between that anchor and ourselves, there is an important rope. Or chain. The chain that connects the boat, us, with the anchor, Jesus Christ. And that chain, I'm going to call it hope. Now, there are people that are very well known on TV and on uh, Facebook and wherever else, on YouTube. That they say, those who hope do not have faith. And in fact, they say, Hope is not faith. And this book, I don't know if you get it, this book is written by Kenneth Hagen to say that those who have hope do not have faith. And today, I'm not going to speak to contradict Kenneth Hagin. He can contradict himself. I don't have to say anything. But faith is the other side of the coin of faith. Of hope. Is the so we have a coin with two faces, one is called faith, the other side is called hope. And because we're going to see several scriptures to teach us how important hope is, in our life. 
So the sermon title is Hope. Allora, um, listen to the Tama. And the theme of the sermon has two parts. And the hope of glory versus hope deferred. <laughs> so the first scripture, this first part of the hope of glory is taken from Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. Um, I've posted two scriptures this morning on the special notice and for a purpose. Um, for the special notices, I made scripture Alan. So you could read them before. So um, uh, and you know what's coming. The last part of Colossians chapter one, verse twenty-seven, which is underlined on the post I, I put, is Christ in you. The hope of glory. So if we have to look at glory as we heard in the introduction, the glory of resurrection, the glory of being with God forever and ever and ever. The condition is that Christ lives in us. We can have knowledge about Jesus unless that knowledge becomes part of our lifestyles. Meaning that that knowledge that we learn about Jesus from the Bible changes our life. Then that knowledge will be the same knowledge like you have about the Queen of England and uh, Hitler and uh, Napoleon and Michela Vassallo, you know, the same kind of knowledge. But having the word of Jesus in us, transforming us, is the Likuna Ken Matalla Mektuba Albna. Shows that Christ is in us. And if Christ is in us, then we believe that we have the hope of glory. Now, um, I can't understand why people say if you have hope, you don't have faith. Because hope and faith depend on each other. Now, some people say if you have hope, you have hope, then you have to wait for whatever you are expecting from God. But if you have faith, you can claim it and you can have it right now. Like that video that we've seen yesterday on one of our chats. The point is that God is expecting us to have hope. 
Because hope builds in us character and we will be able to wait for whenever God wants to answer our prayer. Hope, perseverance, suffering, faith, they all go together. If you attended the Bible studies that we've done the last few weeks from Hebrews chapter 11, you could see that those who had hope could persevere even without seeing what they were promised. So this is the strength and the power of hope. And I think we need a dose of hope as an antidote against the coronavirus environment that we are living in. We have have hope that some scientists will find a cure for it. We have hope that someone will find an and a, a, a way of not infe- not to be infected with it. We hope that Jesus himself intervene and protects us from the virus. And is, this is all the positive things of hope. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 12, and this is where we'll be going uh, further in our sermon. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. Is the show sidra talhaya? Um on the chat on the chat I put also a paraphrased version of this verse. Um, for a chat to call um, uh, tweet, uh, sip, li relata ma della scrittura. And this paraphrase is not getting what you want can make you feel sick. But a wish that comes true is a living, life giving tree. Meta ahna ma 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 konish dak li nishti u em dan il hasif ta mistania yista imaradna pero meta show itna tiji mil ua em tkun pal sijra li tatil haya. I will come to this later on. Niji al dan iktar udim. However, the point of today is this. Is the we hope when all things seems to be hopeless. Our hope is in Christ 
He is the hope of our glory. Alpein ali shahna fi Kristu nitamaw ittama tal gloria. And therefore we're trying to give a broad view of hope. Alek hal nifrubaw naraw ittama biblical hope which basically hope means this hope is translated in different English words some of them would be to trust in or wait for or looking for in lane these words are all translated for words of hope in the original languages um the tradition it um talahar in sibudan il klim u kolla ti referu at tama for example in the old testament um esempio fi testament il adim there is a word awa am kelma awa which means trust li tfisser ti tama it is used for example by jeremiah where he says our hope, our trust, is in you. Din il-kelma ija uzata fil-ktipta Ġeremija li għet indirizza lill-lalla u għet jajt it-tama taħna fik. Our awa is in you. Il-awa taħna ija fik. In Maltese it sounds good, doesn't it? Because awa means power or strength. Fil-lingwa Maltija t-instema t-tajjet għax jisekett t-tajt il-awwa t-għana mulej i-fik. But this is a Hebrew word, not a Maltese word, and it refers to hoping, trusting in God. Izda dinija kelma l-udija li t-fisser li t-tama t-għana i-falla. The psalmist uses the same word, awa, Speaking when in times of trouble one waits for the Lord. The word wait would be awa. Min awa. So they are waiting, I have Psalm 25, 21 and others, waiting till God turns things around. Um, uh, for example, Josalna Hamza Washin verse we had washin, fein at yait, li at yitamaw, u at yistanaw, minant Allah. So sometimes this word awa is mentioned in Prayers. Anka din il-kelma awa ija uzata metat jitolbu. And in taking stands of faith, of belief. U et izommu fisħih għalix jimnu. For example, may those who hope awa in you not be disgraced. God promises those who wait for him not to be disappointed. God is able to bring the realization of one's hopes. Allah is able to bring the Hope leads someone to expect to wait upon God. When the same word Allah is used in the New Testament, 
meta din l-isteskelma għawwa hija użata fit-testament il-ġdid. Il-ġdid. So, you say, but the New Testament is Greek, Old Testament is Hebrew. How is it used in the Greek? U tajdu kif jini użata fil-testament il-qadim li miktub bil-ludi umba fil-testament il-ġdid li utrad... U miktub bil-ludi. All right. You know that in the New Testament, we find many scriptures quoted from the Old Testament. So when they use a scripture where Allah is used, they use a Greek word, which means the same. Allura, meta juzaw skrittura mit-testament il-qadim u em il-kelma awa, juzawa kit-traduzzjoni griga. And again, we find it would mean to be patient. U kol l-insibua li t-istenna bil-sabar. To endure. Bix t-fazzom fis-hih. And to wait. U t-istenna. So as we are seeing, Hope is very important for the Christian. So because I cannot understand how you can have faith in God, but you don't have hope in God. So when we read scriptures in the New Testament, in the Old Testament. Especially where hope is concerned. We find, we see, we learn that God is teaching us to have hope in Him. You see, without hope, we can't even be saved. I have hope that when I die, I'm going to heaven. That hope doesn't mean I'm not sure. But my hope is in Jesus, who promised me. Is that Tama Tia if Christo lived me? I am trusting in God. I am hoping in God for His salvation. At Navda het the Tama a salvation. You see, and by until that day I wait. Usa kem ya sal da kel yum in the stena. Until that day I am patient. Until that day, I endure whatever I have to endure. And this is the difference between hoping in God and hoping in circumstances or in oneself. So Romans chapter 8, verse 24 and 25, we read. Romani, verse 24, for in this hope we are saved. But hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not have, do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. <laughs> Is the Tama Litider Mishtama 
għax dak li wieħet jarraħ għal fejjiet ta' ma fiħ. Izda jiet taħna nittamaw għal dak li ma jnarawx, nistennaw bil-sabar għalih. So, we are saved by this hope. Għalek taħna salvati bidin nittama. It is a hope that has not yet materialized. Ija tama li jada ma twet iks. But we wait patiently for it. Izda nistennaw bil-sabar għalija. One author that lived in the 20th century. Um, uh, autor, um, uh, he lived in the 20th century. Um, uh, hope means hoping when things are hopeless. It's so much to say. Or it is no virtue at all. As long as matters are really hopeful, hope is mere flattery or platitude. Taħjir jo sempli ċi jettajda u mintiċ t-tejxa. It is only when everything is hopeless that hope begins to be a strength. Ija biz meta kollox jider blatama li t-tama fik verament tuħol awa. Chesterton is the author. He was a theologian. Theologo. And he was also um, a writer. He wrote hundreds of books. And when I read this quote, I could connect it with Romans 8, 24, 25. U meta rajt dan il-ħsib tijow, start nirrelata ma din l-skrittura min rumani t-min. So really you start exercising hope when you don't see any hope. Għalek tibda t-ezerċita t-tama fi Kristu, meta min tiex tara l-affarijiet t-ġejjin sew. Remember, in Colossians we read, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Tinsewx il-skrittura min kolossin fejn rajna li Kristu uwa t-tama tal-gloria. So, in Christ, when things seem to be so difficult, there is no way out. That is where you have hope that God can intervene. U emmek fejn inti muattara t-tama taċxejn, pero meta inti t-tafda fi Kristu, Emmek għalla ħaj intervjeni, meta tafda. So when I see a way out of a problem, għalek meta nara izni kif nista nuħroċ men problema, and I say I have hope, un ajtara għandi tama, that is not the complete hope that the Bible is talking about. Mi jieċi tama kompleta li l-Bibja eda titkellem dwara. We're coming back to this hope in a few minutes. When we read the um, scripture in Proverbs, we, said, we read, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Proverbs 13, verse 12. It-tama mtawla t-marra t-l-qalb. So, when we have expectations and they don't come, according to scripture, we get sick. Mitahna dakliet nittama u fiħ dik il-nistennija t-sfiċa fiċxejn, l-skrittura tajdinna li nistaw nimirdu. Now, it is hard sick, just to 
clarify what the words say. Heart sick. Um, uh, bish, bish raw, um, uh, edda, edda scriptura smarra tel al. And that is a reference to anxiety and depression. We heard someone pray this morning about anxiety and depression. So there are needs that everyone has that unless they are met, unless addressed properly, they can bring anxiety and depression. There are needs that everybody has. Like water, food and clothing. We are living in a, in a period of time where Many people are losing work, losing jobs, having their salary dropped, and you know. At at a din nejšu fizmin fein nis a experience au no asta financi u na fu milah barit shino yijdi. They don't know if tomorrow they're going to work, and the boss tells them, you know, you have your notice. You're not working anymore here. So that will bring anxiety in the life of people. Then there is the issue of safety. Many are afraid to go out of the house. They are afraid of touching things. They mean some go to certain extremes because they don't see, feel safe because of the virus. I'm not saying we should go and, you know, some like some religious people that started licking places to show that they could don't get sick with the virus. But safety, the feeling of being safe is important for every human being. We also have the sense of belonging. Anka lithosok party importanti fighter. Many people miss being with their families, their children, grandchildren, and so on. Um hafna nis e hosua din il separazioni mil mahbubin. And this self of belonging, unless we have the ability to trust, hope in God can also bring that anxiety and depression and remove the feeling of well-being. There are other important issues, important needs in our life. But if our hope is directed to these physical things, it will exactly bring anxiety and depression upon us. Allura, il risultat ha tkun ansieta o depressioni. Because our hope and our self-actualization, our well-being must be based on our relationship with Jesus. Min flok, ahna it-tama u da kollu li anna bżon, tri tkun fiducia fi Kristu. 
You see, he, Jesus, is the hope of our glory. But Jesus must be real in our life. If you have a car, and the petrol of the car is in an external tank somewhere in your garage, you don't expect that car to move. But if you get the petrol, put it in the tank, then the car will move. So without Jesus in our life, we cannot expect having the result of the hope of glory. Allura, minar Gesù jammar veramente pajitna, ma nistawx l'esperienza u it-tama tal-gloria fi. What I'm saying is not academic, it is not secular psychology, this is what Simon experienced about life. Um, dan huwa wkoll um, naraw mill-iskrittura li Salamun, Salamun esperienza. You see, we have to focus on the person who is able to change our circumstances. Anna rridu impoġu ħarsitna in him we have the fullness of life. That is why a desire fulfilled is a tree of life. You know that it is a reference, clear reference for Jesus Christ. So, the condition of an unsatisfied, hungry soul The condition of an unsatisfied, hungry soul Results in weakness of spirit and sickness of heart um, uh, resulta, um, uh, diet o alp, um, uh, marida. This is what happens when people have hope, but not in Christ. How blessed is the contrast of a person whose hope is in Christ. In fact, Christ is his hope. The hope of glory. So with all the chaos that's uh, in the world right now, many Believers are trying to cling to some of the truths we find in the Bible. Um, uh, I can name everywhere. With all the cowards that's in the world, many are trying to cling with some of the truths we find in the Bible. The world is dark. Not just with sin, but with whatever is going on at the moment. But there is a promise in the Bible that joy will come in the morning. They will be weakened through the night. But joy will come 
with the morning. And this is where our hope is placed in the joy that will come in the morning. It's important to understand that Jesus is always our light. And therefore the question will be, how is your hope? When your hope is hit with tragedies like those surrounding us, does it bounce back? If you feel hopeless in this situation, you have not yet placed your hope in Jesus Christ. God knows that you are struggling. That's part of the process. That's why it said, we said earlier we must persevere, which is hope. We need to persist through this test of faith. We see great people of God like Isaiah and Jeremiah and David and Solomon, they all met with their challenge of faith. They were challenged with impossibilities. But as we've seen in Isaiah, my hope is in you, Lord. And that is why Christians always should turn to the scripture. Christians that don't regularly read and meditate on the Bible. Are like those people we see sometimes on TV, skin and bones with no nutrition. Those people who eat the bread of life of life remain strong even in the times of storms. And that is why the Christian hope is in God that sustains him. In Psalm chapter 3, verse 2 and 6, mm -hmm. the psalmist is saying, The psalmist is saying. Right. Now keep in mind that when David wrote this psalm, Psalm 3 and others, David, he was running for his life. His own son Absalom was trying to find him and kill him. You know that story. Those who read the Bible knows the story. And this is how he expressed himself. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Trust the devil to discourage you. Trust the devil to discourage 
People will tell you, circumstances will show you that there is no way out for you. The devil will say, God will not deliver you. But, de but David responded to the negative talk with his confirmation of faith in God. Is that David wijet bil confidenza li kellu it-tama li kellu falla. But you, Lord, imma int mulej, are a shield around me. Tarka madwari. My glory. Int il-ġih tijej. Remember the phrase, the hope of my glory? The hope of glory? It-tama tal-gloria. The one who lifts my head high. Int mulej ter fali rasi. I call out to the Lord and answers me from his holy mountain. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear though tens of thousands assail me on every side. So you can see in the midst of fear, David is confessing his faith in God. David Ye confirma tama tio falla. Absalom, his own son. Ibnu Absalom. Gathered an army. Mahurai, um, marmata. Was having advice from people that before used to advise David. Kino, um, Dan Absalom, kine fihu parir, um, David felt betrayed. David He felt afraid from for afraid for his life. So he ran away. But yet his hope for deliverance was in God. Although Jeremiah was not even born in those days, David believed the principle. David the principle that we find in Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You see how important it is to have Christ in you? You know how you see how important it is that you know God's plan for your life and act upon it? God's plan is to prosper you in that calling and that mission that he has given you. God has a plan to give you a hope, hallelujah, and a future. It is important, brothers and sisters, that our hope is in Christ, who is our glory. That hope will keep us steadfast. I will close with one more scripture. From 1 Peter 5, verse 10. 
and the God of all grace, hallelujah, and the God of all grace, not some grace, all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ. Say hallelujah, even if I don't hear you. After you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Hallelujah. Allah li yati kul grazia li sejhilkom al gloria tiyon ta dejen fi Kristu u in nifsu jerġaj jeddidkom i wettaqkom i sahahkom u i etkom fi t-sort. You see, it's not about you. Mux dwarkom. It's not about your ability. Mux dwar labilta taħkom. It's not about my ability. Mux dwar labilta tijen. It's not about my knowledge. It's not about how strong I am physically and emotionally. It's about how I understand my relationship with Jesus Christ. First Peter 5.10 that we just read speaks about suffering. Those who say Christians don't suffer have no idea what the Bible says. Those who say hope is not faith have no idea what they're talking about. With hope you go through that suffering knowing that God will take you out. If you, if you get weak, you get tired in the situation, you're human. Sometimes you get tired physically, sometimes you get mentally, you get emotionally tired. And that, but that's why you need to have that chain of hope with the anchor, which is beyond the veil. The scripture promises that he will rise up, up, rise us up, that he will make us strong, he will make us firm, and he will make us steadfast. The scripture that we read now, I changed my mind. Just one more scripture. <laughs> Just one more scripture. Isaiah 40, 31. Those who hope in the Lord Hallelujah. will renew their strength. Glory to Jesus. Amen. I had to say that, right? <laughs> they will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Because their hope is in the Lord. And He will renew their strength. So after finishing, now finishing this uh, sermon, do not forget. Jesus, if he lives in you, he's working in you. And if Jesus is working in you, he will complete what he started in you. So never be discouraged. Whatever situation is, you are right now. Whatever you are experiencing right now. Your hope must be in Jesus, the hope of glory. If you don't experience anything of this, 
Yet minti t'esperienza shame in dun. I praise the Lord on your behalf. Yenam fahar in mole alisme. And remain strong. U kompli kun psahte. But if today you are worried. Ma yekin lume t'horsok in kwetat. If today you are anxious. Yet in lume t'horsok ansius. If today you feel depressed because of the situation. Yet et t'horsok depressat min habas situazioni. Have a talk with Jesus. Tell him that you want the hope of his glory. Read the scriptures that we said today, mentioned today. I'm going to post it on the special notice page like last time. Remain strong. Is this a period that you grow in faith? It is not a period to get discouraged. It is a period that you exercise your faith in Jesus Christ. Yes, the storms will come, the rain is coming down, the winds are blowing, but you are built on the rock. Don't forget that. And God bless you.